I can't stress enough how important it is to be tracking your expenses. And NAB is a brilliant AI budgeting tool that you can use that utilizes the zero-based budgeting technique to track your expenses. So what I'm going to be doing is going through how you can get started with NAB and the key features that so many people don't realize that you can do with it. Hi, I'm Jacob, and I've been working and studying in the finance industry for the past six years. And throughout that time, I have utilized budgeting apps and budgeting spreadsheets to the absolute max so I know them inside out so in this video I'm going to be going through what exactly YNAB is a quick overview I'm going to talk to you how you can start to use it today then go through the pros and cons and then finally suggest should you be using this or not so giving you my recommendation so Without further ado, what exactly is YNAB? Well, YNAB is also called NAB, and it actually stands for something. It stands for you need a budget, and it utilizes the zero-based budgeting technique, where every single pound or every single dollar is used in some way, shape, or form. So let me bring some color to this. Let's imagine you make 3,000 pounds per month, and you only have three expenses. You have a car repayment, you have a house repayment, and you have a side hustle, which requires constant investment. So what zero-based budgeting is, is it tries to assign every single pound or dollar into those three categories. So you would allocate 500 pounds to your car repayment, 1,500 pounds to your house, and then the final 1,000 pounds into your side hustle investment. So that every single pound or dollar is utilized, spent, invested in some way or another. And not any other budgeting apps really use this apart from NAB, and that's why it's quite unique. So let's actually get on to how can you get using it? How can you get started today? Well, I actually filmed this a few days ago, so say hello to past Jacob. NAB actually seems quite confusing on the face of it, and I'll be completely honest, I was confused to start with, but honestly, it's so easy. So your first step is just getting started, and this is linking your bank accounts into the app. Now, all budgeting apps does that do this, so do not be afraid. All AI-powered tech budget apps are doing exactly the same thing. So all you've got to do is link your accounts. And for someone like me who has several different accounts, debit cards, credit cards, different savers, it's great because you can link literally all of them into your one account. So I'll show you exactly how I do this. You can see here I've currently got a cash and a credit. My cash is from my debit cards, my savers, and my credit is from my credit card. And it's so good because you can literally manage all your connections in this one space. So that's the first thing you need to do to get set up the next thing is actually setting your budget and editing your plan so if I go into this plan screen here and I click in the top right hand corner with the three lines on the pen you can see if I scroll down to the bottom my expenses are set into three categories we've got bills needs and wants and in each of them I have certain line items so for example I've got my rent which is 700 pounds I've got utilities which is 60 groceries which is 200 oh and by the way please don't judge me on my budget some of this is really cheap some of it's extremely expensive so if you have differing values drop it in the comments below but anyway once as well stocks and shares isa cash isa you'll notice to the right hand side of this you can actually set a value on how much you expect to spend in that category each month so for example my stocks and shares i said i plan to put in 250 pounds but sometimes that's going to change sometimes it's going to be more sometimes it's going to be less and this is what i like about nab is that you can click into the stocks and shares you can click edit target and you can change the amount that you want it to be so if i wanted to i could change it to 300 pounds i could change it to 3000 30 000 pounds now i do not have anywhere near that money so i am going to stick at 250 pounds the cool thing as well is you can set the date by when you want to pay it in by. So here I've got the last day of the month just because it's easier for me. Um, my payday is towards the end of the month as well. So it makes it super, super easy. But otherwise, you can literally change it to any single day that you want. So just for example, I'm just going to set it to the 31st and save that target. Now, we've got that for every single one. And what we want to do is assign our money. So what's really good is that because it's linked to your bank account, all your transactions throughout the month are going to feed into this app and they're going to automatically categorize into the, into the category that you've set it for. Now, some of these transactions don't always categorize perfectly. And that's why at the top, you can see review 43 transactions. And if I was to click into that, it's lots of different transactions which just haven't fed through. So for example, you can see SLR barbers. That was me going to the hairdressers. And I haven't set that as a category into my app explicitly but I have sent it 
into the stuff I forgot to plan for. So it's things like that where you will have to manually categorize it. So if I was to take this out of snooze mode and go all the way to the top, go into that, click on the SLR barbers, I can then categorize on the bottom, bottom and I can send it to stuff I forgot to plan for. Then I click done and if I scroll down, I've now overspent on the stuff that I forgot to plan for because I haven't actually set a target there. So that's what's really good. And as I was saying before, NAB really does try to allocate every single pound or dollar, depending on what location you're in, is being utilized. And that's what's great. So we can actually see at the moment, I've paid my rent, I pay my utilities, my student loan, my music, for example. I haven't fully finished paying off my TV, phone and internet yet. That's why it's still saying 15 pounds left on the right hand side. But based on the budget which I've made, I have 158 pounds 93 left. And I can then allocate this to anything I want in my budget. So it means that I can spend an additional 158 pounds, which to be honest, I'm just gonna blow it. I'm gonna probably put it on some clothes or going out. So I can click ready to assign at the top and you can see you can auto assign by a certain category. Now, I don't always auto assign because I find it a little bit difficult. I prefer to go down manually and set myself a thing which I want to assign for. So, for example, I want to spend more on clothes this month. I've only spent 50 pounds. I want to spend an extra 110 pounds this month. So I'm going to allocate 110 pounds. I'm going to hit done. And you can see at the top, it's instantly changed it to 48 pounds 93, which is really, really good. I can save the assignment. And I'm still left with 48 pounds 93. So that side of the budget is really good. And they have implemented other features into NAB, which you've probably seen, but haven't understood. So for example, they have a spotlight section. So if I go onto the spotlight section, you can see exactly what your total target is for spending, how much you are underfunded by, how much you've assigned and how much you've spent. So it kind of does this in quite a boring, horrible way to look at. Like it's not very visually appealing. It's not really telling me much at all, but that is why they have another tab, which you probably haven't seen either, but you go on to reflect and this shows you a full breakdown of your spending and it compares it to the previous months. So if you look at spending breakdown here, you can see that I've had to categorize some. So that's stuff, stuff I've got to plan, which is the barbers, the transportation. It works out your current net worth as well. This is currently pulling through negative 638 pounds. So quick insight for you, Forbes, I am worth 638 pounds. That's a negative as well. So not worth much there. You've got age of money as well, which is quite cool because age of money is the amount of time that your money is sat in your account for. Mine's only three days and it's because I move my money around constantly. I, as soon as the money hits my account, I'm almost instantly moving over to a savings account. I only actually keep 50 pounds in my debit card at one time because I don't want to be in a situation of spending too much or spending more than I want to spend. So that's age of money. And that's basically what NAB is in a nutshell and exactly how you can use it. So let's go back to future Jacob now. So now you know exactly how YNAB works. What are the pros and what are the cons? Well, I've been using YNAB for almost three months now. So I've been able to try and test it and really see if it's worth it. Cause obviously you have to pay for this app as well. And I think the biggest pro over Emma, over Plum, over all of the budgeting apps is that it's highly customizable and it allows you to just change your expenses throughout the month. So for example, I have assigned myself 600 pounds for dining out, entertainment, and just doing general things throughout the month, which I find fun. This often can go over, but sometimes it can go completely under and using a normal budgeting spreadsheet or the other apps means that it's really difficult to continually change the figure that I am spending or underspending on. So YNAB is so good because when I do overspend, it allows me to assign money from my other categories into that category to ensure that I actually have enough money. But when I underspend, it actually tells me how much I've underspent by, and it allows me to assign that money into a different category, which I haven't spent. So let's say I underspend by 50 pounds. It allows me to assign that 50 pounds into, let's say my stocks and shares ISA or my cash ISA. And if I've overspent, it means that sometimes I have to move money from my cash ISA to cover that over expenditure. And that's really good because in a classic budgeting spreadsheet, it's not as fluid as that. And that is why YNAB is so good. And that's sort of its USP. Now, obviously when you have pros, you have cons as well. And honestly, there's two cons when it comes to this. And the first one is it's extremely difficult to use 
when you first start out. It's very clunky, you don't know where to start, you don't really understand how the assigning works unless you really understand zero-based budgeting, you don't really understand what the reflection tabs and the spotlight tabs are showing you. So if you don't really understand budgeting or you're a beginner to budgeting, this app honestly isn't for you. You need to be looking at Emma or Plum. Now I created a whole video on this and I compared them like for like, so check out this video if you are interested in that. But aside from that, the thing which really bugs me about these budgeting apps, it's the same for Emma, Plum and of course NAB, is that they charge money, an annual subscription. So this one is $99 or £79 a year. And come on, the founders of these companies, please can you find a different way to monetize your platform? Because I want to save money. I don't want to have to spend money straight off the bat because I don't know if I'm going to fully save $100 or £79. So founders, I'm looking at you, find a different way to monetize your platform. Because that is the other main con with the budgeting app. I don't want to be spending the money and I'm sure you don't want to be either. So now I've gone through the pros and cons, I've gone through how it works and a quick overview of what YNAB actually is, should you be using it? Well, it's a kind of a yes and no answer to be honest. If you like simplicity and you like automation, then YNAB is not for you. That is not the platform you need to be using. This platform is for people who are almost intermediate or advanced budgeters, where you understand the zero-based budgeting technique and you understand exactly how much you want to be spending each month and have the time to be able to constantly alter your budget. Now, if you are liking automation and you want simplicity, Ember and Plum are the ones for you. Now, if you actually want something a little bit more difficult to use, but you can get more performance out of it and actually save money in the future, well, this is the platform for you. It's a little bit like a Formula One car. They're difficult to drive, but the more difficult it is to drive, the better performance you can get out of it. So I can't believe I've just compared a Formula One car to a budgeting app, but yes, you heard it, I just did. So if you want something a little bit more difficult, then honestly, this is the app for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and before you go, stop for a second. What we need to do is go down, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you can see when my videos come up and hit that like button because it really helps the algorithm. And if you're feeling really brave, drop a comment in the comment section below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.